Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Quincy in front of the Stall House. And we're at the address of 300 South 18th Street. This house has been here since 1894. And it's on the Quincy Preserves Tour, which they do every fall. And every fall, they're good enough to call us and give us a sneak preview of some of the houses that are going to be on that tour. And we've got two of them for you today. And uh, Mervyn Durham, you're, a, you're with Quincy Preserves. You're a historian. That's correct. And uh, you've been good enough to come out here and tell us about the stall house and some of the architectural features that we see here today. And this is a real gem, isn't it? This is yeah. a beauty. It's a beautiful Queen Anne, yes. Um, it's pretty much as it was when they built it. The only thing that has really changed is the roof. They put asphalt shingles on. The, the turret still has the original metal cap. And the chimney still retains its original height. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice features of this house is it's got the Cupid's relief with the floral garland in between each one. Oh yeah, yeah. And the bracketing is still present on the turret and on both gables, which some people refer to as bracketed, some people call it corbels, but uh -huh. they're, they're, that's all original. Uh -huh. They kept the leaded glass um, the same on both gables, as well as the thing about Queen Anne's is they like to break up the surfaces. You never see a flat wall mm -hmm. and they've done a really nice job here Chatton has he's got a um, arched window supported by a pair of pilasters with and that's ionic. on the side of the house right? correct looking at the side okay. at the side uh, below the gable there and you can see that there is a uh, upper uh, balcony with beautiful corbel supporting mm -hmm. it and the beautiful limestone um, support mm -hmm. into the basement. There, there's another entrance down to the, did that go to the basement then, the stone entrance? There? Yeah, it, it accesses the basement as well as the main part of the house. Mm -hmm. The, um, and then another nice feature is the oval window with the stained glass window. Yeah. And the dental work, all that little checkered patterning mm -hmm. uh, is still present. Mm -hmm which is pretty remarkable yeah, over a hundred years. And when you look at all the spindles, now we're looking at uh, one little porch there, but all around the front porch and all the woodwork and all the spindles appear to be, if, if they're not original, they, they at least they're from the original pattern, aren't they? Yeah, I would say by the shape of the house that whoever, the owners have always taken great care in mm -hmm. retaining the originality of the house. Um, so if the spindles would have deteriorated they would have duplicated yeah. new ones yeah and and these uh, all these columns and I, and I guess these are ionic columns these are all either original or they're the same pattern as the original wooden columns I would say all they're around. yeah pretty much original the fluted columns with the ionic capitals all original mm -hmm. um, I guess it's one thing good thing you can say about the leaded paint is that it helped preserve oh, the wood it's beautiful and, and it should be noted too since this is a wooden house the paint has to, this has to be painted frequently, or, I mean, it'll just fall apart. Right. right? It'll just... Yeah, you gotta stay on top of it. Yeah, if you let yeah. it get away on you, you got big issues. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And the owner has, has said that we can come in and take a look at, uh, at, at some of the house. So we're gonna head inside and see Mr. DeYoung. So Merlin, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Alan DeYoung, you've owned this beautiful home for what, a couple of years? A couple of years, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. um, we were looking at some of the pictures just a moment ago about what this woodwork looked like you said, some years ago before right. it got it stripped down back to its original uh, color. Now it's all this gorgeous woodwork is the, is the original oak color which it was when the house was built. I mm -hmm. yeah. Probably, yeah. There may have been a stain and a light stain here. Mm -hmm. so. We're, we're standing here on the on the landing mm -hmm. and up there's the second floor down there is the is the entry hall mm -hmm. so why don't you and i go down and we'll act like we just came in the house and you can give us a little tour okay, okay thanks this is a beautiful spot my goodness and i love the way the light just streams in through that huge window there yeah, i'm glad you came in a <laughs> came at the good Time we of day. talked when we were outside. We, we talked about how much of the original glass you still you still have in the home, and this leaded glass is beautiful. I think it's probably all original, yeah. 
And uh, you also talked about the fact that uh, now you've, you you redid all the floors. Uh -huh. So this this is the original oak floor. And yes. You sanded it and resurfaced yeah. it and everything, uh -huh. and it's gorgeous. And we saw from outside that this this is the ground floor of the turret. That's right. Yeah, I did the stairs, but the oh, you did the that floor yourself. Guy, did you really? I did the stairs. Oh my goodness, he that's a lot of work. wanted hundred dollars a stair. I said, mm -hmm. well, I probably ought to try it first. And it's you did. A, and I you did. did. Okay, good for you. He would have done a better job, hey, but it's okay. Well, I tell you what, it, it, when you have sweat equity, it feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> you have a lot of sweat equity in this you house. Do. I'll bet you do, and you're going to have a lot more too, aren't <laughs> that's you? True. Um, okay, so this turret, we're on the, the ground floor. The turret actually goes, what, all three floors? All three floors, yeah. That's really nice. That's really nice. We saw the huge fireplace from outside, uh, and that's what we're looking at now. Uh -huh. And and that is serviceable, right? Yes, that's what we hear. Mm -hmm. have you haven't used service. it yet, but you haven't intend used to. It, but we intend to, yes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, this house has umpteen fireplaces because back in the day, they, they had a big old boiler, but they used the fireplace they a lot, I think, didn't they? Yeah. This this is the par another parlor, uh -huh. but the, you showed me an interesting thing a little early. You said, well, you know, this has different woodwork, mm -hmm. and they even used the pocket doors to that extent. Yes. Would you show us? Sure. So this is uh, two different the, the entryway, and then this is the front parlor, and the entryway has got the quarter sawn oak, but the mm -hmm. parlor is this is probably cherry, and so when you if you pull these doors the pocket doors out, which still work, you'll find that the what you've got on one side is the cherry. <laughs> oh, wow, that is clever. And what you have on the oh. other side is the oak. That Don't you love that attention to detail <laughs> like that? <laughs> I had, love that. I've had carpenters come through here and just shake their head and say, nobody does this anymore. No, no I one. wouldn't even think of it. I mean, it's expensive. Right. Well, that's heavy too, man. Oh, yeah, Help me heavy. out there. Yeah. That's all solid wood. Yeah. And, and look, at the, look at this wood, this, these features uh, up, up top uh -huh. the, on the ceiling. It's beautiful. Are, those are plaster, actually, the white, the oh, white plasters. beautiful. There. And you're so fortunate to have, to have this, this cherry throughout this room. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. And here's a good picture of the house in, back in the day. Um, it, still looks, it still looks just like that now. I don't know when that was taken, but yeah. that's... Uh, Probably it, it wasn't, you know, maybe 30, 40 years mm -hmm. ago, I guess. Now, the dining room's huge. And you don't have a big table in here yet. Probably, no. probably gonna have it. We don't know point. that many people. Yeah, I know. We, I could. I don't either. I don't know. How I could fill right. this room. That's right. So, um, uh, so we have a t table. We can an overflow table. We can open up. Uh huh. But we this serves us pretty well. I yes, guess. it does. Now, the, I think that one of the first things you notice when you come in this room is that this is not paint or wallpaper. This is tapestry. Right. Not everybody has that. Either. <laughs> no. It's really it's, something. Mm -hmm. Now it's faded, of course, yes. over the years, but um, I'll just won't touch much of it because I know it's fragile. But it's tapestry all the way around, and gorgeous, gorgeous kind of European scenes. Yeah, just beautiful. Now, and, and they had ga a gas uh, chandelier here, didn't they? Well, actually, I'm not sure whether it was original. This, when you look at the old pictures of this house, this chandelier was actually in that in that room. In the oh, parlor. Mm -hmm. So all the ceiling fixtures in here, there's somebody's done something over the years. Mm -hmm. And two or three of them have been moved from one room to another room and a couple of rooms don't have anything. So mm -hmm. there's a hit someone well, I'm looking for someone who could tell me what what happened in these places when they did this kind of room. Because <laughs> they didn't do anything else in this room, but this Chandelier yeah. was in that room last time, and now there's nothing in yeah. that room. Well, maybe Mervyn can help you. I don't yeah. know. He may he may know somebody who knows a little yeah. bit about that. This is interesting too because it has this bay, these right. curved windows, right. and of course the leaded glass throughout again. Right. And and you're so fortunate to have that uh, to have that still because windows break sometimes. So I've got it. So that, yeah, that'll be difficult to replace it, the curved oh, it glass. It really will. Yeah. Now there are some interesting facets here. Um, the the doorbells and the rooms have bells in them. Mm -hmm. And so there was a, a, a house since 1894, I imagine this was kind of a radical thing, but if you, wanna, if you want help either getting in the house or if you want some servant to help you, right. all you have to do is go to the doorbell that's in that room. Right, uh -huh. and a lot of these places, and I think this one too had a, a, bell, a bell like this on the floor, so when you're ready for your next course, mm -hmm. you can, uh, oh, someone can, the waiter can okay. come in, you don't have to get up or you don't have to yell mm -hmm. to get it, you just step on the button oh, on the floor, just like in Downton Abbey. Fascinating, now, and, and here's another thing that not, not many houses had. Back when, when you had a, a, a boiler down in the basement, this is a thermostat. That's right. 
And this would actually that signal would, the it's boiler, broken, wouldn't it? But it is. But it's yeah. the third. That's a, that's your original case. And yeah. how would that work with the boiler? Well, as I you know, I heard that the boiler there was a convey. A, it was coal fired boiler, and, and there was a conveyor belt. And mm -hmm. when the bell, when you when the thermostat went off, that somehow that conveyor belt started to feed, automatically oh, feed okay. the coal boiler. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that worked. I'd love to that see it. That makes sense to me. Yeah, that I mean, makes sense to me. I don't know when to turn off and how much coal per foot is there. I don't have any idea. We were talking about the bell system and this is fascinating in here because now you had to renovate the kitchen because yes. the kitchen was old as and old kitchens are always small right. and not very functional. Right. But when we were talking about the bell, okay, so you, it was electric. Because what yes. would happen is you'd hear the bell and then this would light up the area of the house where the bell was rung right. from, right? Mm -hmm. So you would know whether it was from the billiard room or whether it was the guest chamber or the dining room or whatever, you would know that that's where the assistance right. was needed. Right. <laughs> that is fascinating. That is so fascinating. What is it like to take a kitchen that's 120 some years old and try to bring it up to, up to your standards? Well, as I said, the reason we ha we had first of all it was a lot it was significantly smaller until we added that space back there, and the other thing is that the second floor was sagging into the, the, the kitchen, mm -hmm. so we had to do something because there was the whole bank of of cupboards that was also collapsing. Oh, so and then oh. the the doors weren't mm -hmm. wouldn't open. Yeah. So it really needed, that was the, that's a structural yeah. issue in the house. Apparently they've uh -huh. done a lot of structural repair over the hundred years, but this oh, okay. was the one that faced us was the yeah. problem with the bathroom so, over the kitchen. Yeah, and that, and that butler pantry in there, it, it, you, so you had to do the bathroom and the kitchen at yes. the same time yes. because that was uh, yeah, one job dependent on the other. Mm -hmm. If we could take one more quick stop, you have mm -hmm. a study in here that I want mm -hmm. to finish up in. We're going to go through here. This butler's pantry is really neat too, by the way, because of all these built-ins that you've got. Mm -hmm. And back through the dining room, and then this hallway t near the stairs, and into what I call I call a study, but you would call it your office, or it could have been yes. a library at some time. Yeah, I think they call it a library. Because plenty of storage for books here, and again, mm -hmm. another fireplace, and this beautiful built-in uh, built wood. Just wonderful, wonderful. And you use this for... This, you know, I'm a professor type, so... Mm -hmm. I have, all, I have my do my work here. Does my does my da, my office? It's your study my office, office, huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, this home is beautiful, and I and I could tell that you're having having fun working on it. I, yeah. I, I'll bet you'll learn a lot too. Yeah, we learn you? a lot, <laughs> a lot of work, but it's yeah. it's rewarding. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ellen. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. We're now at 1237 Park Place in Quincy, the home of Julia Auk. She's owned this house about two years, and. Mervyn, it's a it's a Queen Anne also, isn't it? Correct. So about the same age as the last house we saw. Well, this is the late Queen Anne, where the other one was the Queen Anne. It was built. This house is built at the, the later end of the Queen Anne period, which ended in 1910. Mm -hmm. This house is built in 1905. Mm -hmm. So it's a little square than the other one, but it still has a lot of the attributes of a Queen Anne. It's got the beautiful wraparound porch that extends along one side. Mm -hmm. uh, this one has. Again, the fluted columns with the ionic capitals. You see the dental work again underneath the eaves of the mm -hmm. porch mm -hmm. and as well as under the gable ends up there. Mm -hmm. On the second floor as well, above the, above the circular the bay window. Correct. Yeah, okay. Uh, this house has a upper um, banister, which is a nice touch. It has a lot of sy symmetry to the house. Uh, this house also has the release as well. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll see it on the top gable, the front gable on the porch, and also the uh, east facing gable. Mm -hmm. Not as much bracketing, but there's some beautiful brackets or corbels on the, underneath the gable. Uh, it has beautiful leaded glass on the arched uh, gable bay. And you can see the leaded glass above the front entrance doors yeah. and just to the left. Yeah. Very, very nice. Very beautiful. Yeah. Very graceful. It's very stylish. Very graceful. Yeah. Um, there's also some uh, some on the side of the house that you wanted to show me. Yeah, the stairway landing window mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is just, to me, it is one of the nicer attributes of the house. Well, let's go take a look. Sounds great. Yeah. So you can see. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, so this Romanesque style window, it's got the arch, which makes it Romanesque. Mm -hmm. 
It's got a, a beautiful keystone at the center, at the very apex, mm -hmm. and then the uh, arched bevel glass. So just below the bevel glass, you can see the, it's called a lintel, and it's got a crown molding in there yeah. with uh, more of the, um, with the urn sitting mm -hmm. on top of the pilaster, which, which is made of a, the fluted pilaster and the ionic capital, which matches the front porch, and it's mm -hmm. got the nice limestone window sill, yeah. and again, cobbles supporting that. Yeah, really, really nice touches. Yeah. Did a little extra, didn't they? Yeah. Okay, Julia, we, we enter your beautiful home. And it's interesting to note, come, come on in here after you close the door. I interesting to note that you, you've got a beautiful little breezeway there that's all paneled. It's all paneled in this wonderful yeah. woodwork that's all throughout yeah, the house. It's pretty beautiful. Um, and, and if you look up at the transom there, this is kind of neat too, because of course it's got the leaded glass and everything, but that opens. So yeah. it, you can open that, and then you can also open the transom on this side, Absolutely. which allows you to get a nice breeze. Yeah, right? well, we were really excited. Um, I lived in a house in St. Louis that had, you know, transoms, but they were all painted over, all the wood, right. they all would the never hardware. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So I was living uh, by myself for the first uh, 10 months or so. Um, we were between houses and jobs and that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I would open the transom on the exterior as well as the interior. Um, so I can get a nice breeze through mm -hmm. in the fall. I love the, the fresh air. But um, a lot of bugs would come in, yeah. uh, like praying mantis, which I love. It didn't bother <laughs> me at all. So when my husband got here, um, he started <laughs> making screens for the house. Like none of the windows actually had screens. So he has begun the process of oh, hand crafting. He's, wow. a, he's a, a remodeler guy. He has worker. to be handy oh, yeah. to do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah. So you can open this one now. Yeah, and, and, absolutely. and with a screen, no bugs and plenty yeah. of air. There you no go. No bugs and plenty of air. It's Hard. <laughs> I'm, oh, I don't have a lot good for him. Upper body good strength, for him. but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is beautiful. This is much smaller than the house that we saw earlier, but sure. it's the same period, and it's got the same beautiful detailed attention to to the woodwork. Yeah, and it's, it's quarter sewn oak, just like the last house that we saw. Absolutely, beautiful. and there's just so many different details in it that um, I mean, I think we were in and out of the house for many many times looking at it and you still don't notice everything. Mm -hmm. Like even still now, we're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even notice that before. What is it, this is beadwork or whatever this is. What's yeah. this called, do you know? They call that, I think it's like egg and arrow egg, or, or. Well, yeah, you can see the eggs. Egg, arrow, mm -hmm. something. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you're not yeah. supposed to be an expert, I just, but again, yeah. you can see at the top there. You can see it's got the column, the uh, the uh, the uh, mm -hmm. ionic columns, like yeah. the outside of the house does. And we think that perhaps those were cast. We think they might be actually like ceramic or something, and then oh. um, painted mm -hmm. over because we don't notice any actual grain in them. Oh, that was on. kind of pointed out to us at some point mm -hmm. by a historian. And I also one of my favorite things is just the view up the staircase to that gorgeous leaded yeah. that beveled glass yeah. piece up there that we saw yeah. from and it's outside. a gorgeous house next door too so you get really get a nice look at the little turret over there too absolutely um pocket doors that's kind of neat isn't it mm -hmm. absolutely we have a set between the foyer and the living room and then another set into the dining room mm -hmm. and i was thrilled they were here i had a very old home as i mentioned before and the pocket doors were gone yeah and i don't know what that's about yeah. <laughs> but i was glad these were here I, I guess they were worth something and perhaps you know, if you're not going to use them why not cash them in yeah um, and then you do interesting things. Like you, you like, you, you're really not a 1900 girl. You kind of mm. like a little country look in, in, in there too. Yeah, yeah. I and like this is, looks like barn wood. Is sure, this barn wood? sure. Well, it is a, it's an imitation uh -huh. shiplap. Yeah. I'm um, a big uh, Joanna Gaines fan. Oh, okay. I enjoy uh, <laughs> flea markets and, mm. and um, you yeah. know, estate sales and antique malls. Um, it's kind of a hobby. Yeah. Um, for my husband as well, which is really exciting. We have similar work schedules, so um, we kind of made a deal that when we sold our house in St. Louis, we were basically going to get rid of everything and start fresh here. Yeah. So, I mean, there's probably five things on this first floor that were actually purchased new. Mm -hmm. We enjoy picking, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. like kind of a farmhouse shabby chic something. I don't know what to call it, but I think it's not what you expect when you walk into a Victorian no, home. No, it's not. It's <laughs> That's not. the plan. But, I mean, it kind of works. Look at this dining room, and this is sort of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It does, it has kind of a country, 
I don't know, kind of a country turn of the century look or something. Absolutely. I'm not sure. What it... Well, we were able to find this table local at a wonderful <laughs> vendor downtown. We also found the chairs in a similar area, but not in the same shop. And they were as is. We didn't do mm -hmm. anything on these. So that's exciting. Some of the pieces we do ourselves and others we yeah. find. You're just so fortunate, though, because you've got these bay windows all around the house. You know, it gives you more space. And, and, and the leaded windows, which yeah. are, you know, and we, we remarked at the last house we were in that it, when, when these windows are intact like this, it's so fortunate because glass breaks. Oh, you know, yeah. glass can break. And well, and they're not even cracked or anything. Uh -oh. like we were so excited. And I'm a big bird uh, watcher and um, really into insects, as mm -hmm. I mentioned. So we did this area between the homes. It's like a bird garden with all the different bird feeders mm -hmm. and our kitties, um, Francis and Claire. You trust them around the birds? They <laughs> hang out here, actually. <laughs> they like um, to watch them, yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> we just put a little pillow up here for them, and they're very entertained by all the mm -hmm. birds coming and going. We have, I mean, we've had <laughs> hawks already, even. Mm -hmm. Like, we get every kind of species of yeah, bird. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> the, the kitties love it. <laughs> now, as we go into the kitchen, which has been uh, remodeled since mm -hmm. before you bought the house. Yes. Um, you have an interesting story about how you came to own this house because, yeah. um, you know, it doesn't always happen this way, does it, Julie? It doesn't, you know. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Um, so I was um, always kind of in love with Quincy. My husband and I were fortunate mm -hmm. enough to come here on a family vacation. I guess it's been five years now. And just fell in love with the area, fell in love with the street in particular. It, it um, is sort of the mirror of a the home uh, in the street where we lived in St. Louis mm -hmm. um, and fell in love with the house for sure. And then fast forward a couple of years, um, I just thought it was a good time to get my name out there. And um, so I had uh, sent my resume to Quincy University uh, when I finished my PhD and um, went on Zillow just to kind of see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, the house that I was in love with back then was on the market. <laughs> so um, the story goes that I went to the job interview was yeah. sort of like the third round of, of you know, yeah. that process. And then uh, met with a realtor after that and um, put a contract down on the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then asked my realtor, what would someone do in Quincy with a PhD mm -hmm. if I don't get this job because I'm buying this house. Because I'm going to be here. Yeah. <laughs> and I got the job and I bought the house. Oh, <laughs> so, oh, yeah. And then your husband found a job in Quincy too. Absolutely. He works for the school district. So we have a similar schedule. And yeah. um, we were able to sell our home uh, again on a identical street in, mm -hmm. in St. Louis. And then he was able to join me. And he's been here now a little over a year. Yeah. And uh, I've been here That's two true. years. We mentioned that the, you know, the kitchen has been remodeled. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the house, uh, much of the house was not. Much of it was pretty dingy in earlier years, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, and uh, pri so we've been here two years. Prior to us, the family was here for 10. Mm -hmm. And I know before that, it was very much still very Victorian inside. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a floral wallpaper probably in every room. Mm -hmm. The kitchen was still in its original state, which actually for people that enjoy vintage things was very cool, yeah. um, but not maybe as functional <laughs> as yeah, one would have right. needed. Um, lots of shag carpet, lots of pink, lots mm -hmm. of ceiling to floor draperies, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And the previous owners then decided to modernize yeah. and then we just picked and up where they the left off. You and, were the beneficiaries And of added that. some I more. Mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have like a bathroom upstairs that was very much still I always call it Brady Bunch mm -hmm. and now it's um, you know Joanna Gaines yeah. looking bathroom oh, this is, this is, yeah this is it's, so, it's beautiful and, and I yeah, can tell this is really functional you could you could you could do uh, you could have guests in yeah. here you could just you know you could yeah it's just the right size for entertaining people, yeah. bet, I mean and yeah. you have a nice big dining room so you've got plenty of preparation I guess the only there. thing we really changed in here there wasn't a backsplash for some reason um, you know just homeowner's mm -hmm. choice I guess so my husband did go ahead and add that for us and then we're just sort of slowly updating some things, changing some colors. Right now he's working on the uh, mud room where the back staircase is. Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna check that out right now. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, another really fun story I think is this light fixture in the dining well, let's room. Let's go take a look. Um, it's not original to this house. Actually, the light that we believe was there is actually in the mudroom now. Okay. We found it in a root cellar in the basement, which is an interesting story. We were digging around in a, it has a dirt floor even. Yeah. And we found this unbelievable light fixture. But this particular one, so a neighbor across the street, he had found these when he was out sort of um, antiquing across the country. And there were two. So he brought it to the homeowner here. Uh -huh. and. 
um, uh, basically told her, you know, you should use this. It'd be fabulous in your dining mm -hmm. room. I think it would look so great. There was something up here that was a little more modern. Yeah. Um, and so that was the very first thing when I had a chance to meet him. And he came into the house last year in October. We did the like October Fest little Halloween uh -huh. tour. And he was like, oh, I hope that light's here. I hope that light's here. And I'm like, what light? And then, so he told me the story. Yeah, so I love all the yeah, stories. Yeah. The gentleman that I'm friends with now who grew up here actually tells stories of, of uh, molding all of these pieces, these plaster pieces by hand. So those are those are actually yeah. hand molded. Oh, terrific. I know, it's amazing. Well, you should have a lot of fun showing the folks that come to the tour uh, your home and I and I hope you uh, I hope you do. I hope you have a good time and I hope you enjoy Absolutely. the fact that you're doing it. Thank you for being Thank with us. Thank you. Today. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah. And uh, you can see these two homes as well as uh, others on Quincy Preserve's annual fall tour coming up. With another Illinois story in Quincy, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you.